I ain't worried about him. He little. He little. He too little, man. You gonna body him? All I know is I only seen one dude with a big ass that can hoop. <laughs> and that's that's the old boy who got the uh, OnlyFans model chick. Who? What's his name? Oh. Zion. Oh, he got big butt. I don't He's know a big too man. Many with them ham hawks that can hoop. He's always gonna be hurt. You walk like you play, like you can hoop. I walk like a walk like you can hoop. Yeah, I give you that. Yeah. He see little Jordan in my walk. You know what I mean? He see mm-hmm. little MJ in my walk. Get that little pigeon toe hey, on you. He got pigeon toe when he turned the corner, though, because we were talking about hooping. Uh, see, that's how you know, that's how you know some, some old niggas, because the old pigeon toe was cool back in the day. <laughs> MJ. You, don't you see some right chicks, there. you all of a sudden, you bowl in here, pigeon toe. Hey, but now that they got Brian, Cash won't walk like that. But, uh, it's, it's all about who the star is. Hold up. Limitless. They can send me a cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. They can send me a cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Get my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. Hey, man. Welcome to the pivot, bro. Appreciate y'all, man, for having me, man. Did you ever get that American Airlines sh- straightened out? Yeah, we we straightening it out right now. Yeah, you good? Yeah, I'm all the way. So straight. you was executive planning. They gonna give you concierge key? That's the, that's exactly what they said they gonna do. <laughs> but I plug, said that plug, wasn't enough. Man, I asked you because I, I need said, no, that no, plug. Enough. I need concierge key, <laughs> and I need the concierge fee. <laughs> <laughs> Pay my ass. We are talking. What we, we gonna talk after this. Absolutely. We gotta talk. I fly the shit out of America. What? And I've been executive platinum f- since we've been doing this. I'm like, what a concierge key package. Like, we used to me. I wanna come off the plane and, and uh, somebody be waiting on me. Right there with the car. Oh, no, he ain't right. I need that. Y'all go that way. Yeah. I need that. <laughs> you all the way regular, just like us. <laughs> you and Fred worried about some status. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, it gets you through the airport faster. You go out the country, you come back in, you ain't gotta do all that. You like, all right, bye, I'm going. Back room, VIP, let's go. <laughs> yeah, see? Hey man, can I introduce the show? Go for it. He come in talking cash money. Yeah. Welcome to the pivot. This is Chan, I'm RC, that's Freddie T, you know us all. I feel like we hop out of a car somewhere together in some other state. Oh, always bumping the y'all. You know what I'm saying, once a month. We, every day we hustling, baby, we ain't Rick Ross. Man. Every but, day. I mean, one half of one of the best podcasts in the world, Million Dollars Worth of Game, Thank which you, you started. Yeah. You know, yep. which you started yourself. Mm-hmm. But I want to ask a, a different question. Yeah. You know, you, you know, said you king of Philly, you know, and the way that you rep Philadelphia has seemed a little different from some people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you are in the community. You are still a part of the fabric of the city. Why is Philly so much a part of you and so important to you? Because I know how hard it is to make it out. You know what I mean? I, I know how difficult it is to become somebody growing up in Philadelphia. Every day you see people that got extreme talent but for some reason they're gonna fall short in life they're gonna fall short on that talent that God blessed them with so for me I was somebody who just never gave up you know what I'm saying deal after deal after deal after deal just working and just kept grinding because I always believed that I was somebody special if nobody else didn't ever believe that, I always knew that no matter where I went, I stood out. No matter what I did, I stood out. That was what God blessed me with. So I, I always believed that I was somebody special and I always believed in God. You know, even when I was in the streets crazy, my wife would tell you who'd been with me for 25 years, no, he, he, always, he always prayed. He might pray and then go drink some syrup. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to pray over that syrup, though. I just believe that if you put the work in, you know, you're going to get blessed when it's your time. So that's why I I never gave up. Giving up wasn't in me. How did you beat the streets, though? The music kind of started taking off. You know what I mean? When you start seeing opportunity and you start seeing that, damn, I I can really. Because when you in the streets, the object used to be to get out the streets. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to stay in the streets. You, when you grow up in the streets, you understand that nobody ever ends up the drug dealer with the big house on the hill. That shit is in the movies. They never end up like that. So when you in the streets, 
you trying to find a way, you trying to find an opportunity. A lot of people get into the streets because they seen that the people that was older than them who got into the streets, they were somebody in the hood. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like, damn, the only motherfuckers that I know are successful is the niggas that hustle. Everybody else on the block got a regular job. They drive regular fucking cars. They, they might be at my house on Thursday begging for some sugar. I might be at their house on Saturday asking do they got some cheese to throw on these fucking burgers. So, <laughs> so at the end of the day, the only motherfuckers that you see that's successful where we come from is hustlers. And it ain't necessarily got to be a drug deal. It just be hustlers, a nigga that got a hustling mentality that. Mm -hmm. And then some shit you don't understand at a young age. You see one well, motherfucker, he getting money. You're like, oh, no, he, he got a bunch of houses. To a young kid growing up, they don't know what the fuck that mean. Oh, he, he, he bought houses. Said, okay, cool. No, I know that he bought some motherfucking perk 30s. Mm. And I didn't see him go from nothing to something. So that be the drive for the young people. They don't even see that as a different way out. They don't even believe that as a different way out. So as I grew in life, I understood. I, oh, I went to college. So I, I, you took a kid that was in the ghetto and put him in a 95% white college. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the myths, a lot of the, the, the shit that was, wasn't real became true to me. You feel what I'm saying? Because in the hood, the white man's responsible for everything. Yeah. Damn, the white man locked Johnny up. You, you, you be in tune with that shit. Damn, they got Johnny. Shit. Johnny ran in the store with a fucking gun. What the fuck yeah. are you talking about? Johnny's supposed to get got. It was a chance Johnny was going to get booked when he ran in the fucking <laughs> store. <laughs> the white man had booked Johnny. Johnny booked his fucking self with that bad decision. Right. But when you grow up in the ghetto and that be the mindset. I went to a 95% white college and I learned a lot. I learned that you got some fucked up white people in this world. And I learned that you got some really good fucking white people mm -hmm. in this world. Yeah. That did shit for me that no, they ain't never did. Hey, you want to take my car? I'm like, bro, your car. Go, what? <laughs> yes! Nobody in the hood don't let you borrow this shit. <laughs> your mama don't even let you borrow your car when you get a license. Mom, I'm a license, I drive. Fuck, no, you ain't driving. You don't know how to drive my license. <laughs> I know how to drive. You ain't driving my shit. You may go, you may go ask your, your, your father, boy, can you drive? <laughs> so, you know, I learned a lot. Honestly, Truly, bro, that was one of the best things I ever did because it really opened my mind up, you know what I'm saying, to just being myself around no matter what the color person is, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So later on in life when I'm dealing with lawyers, when I'm dealing with business people doing business, I'm just myself, you know what I'm saying? Where a lot of people who just grew up in the hood when you take them out the hood environment, they totally uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? I got homies right now, I take them in a room full of white people, he talk about how you doing, I'm Eric. I'm like, Eric, nigga, you bullethead, nigga. <laughs> Fuck you me, Eric, nigga, that, that's your name? I've been calling you fucking bullethead for a whole life. So, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that really helped me expand in, in, in life a lot, you know what I mean? Hey, G, uh, August 22nd, 1996. Yeah. You um, committed armed robbery. Damn, where the fuck did y'all get this information You from? were kicked out of college, the yes. same college you spoke on. Yes. You also lost a friend, a very yes. close friend. Welcome to Philadelphia. Still banging. That shit is hard right up, now, man. hard to this That's day. That's what's up, man. And your music... You know, you talk about life lessons. On the podcast, you guys talk about life lessons. You talk about personal growth and struggles, everything you just talked about. How, you know, going through all of that, what, what significance in the armed robbery, getting kicked out of college, how did that help, you, help shape who you really are now? Up until that point, I had, I had lost friends, you know what I mean? And it was like, it hit, it hurt. But 
losing Al, that hit a little different. Because Al really wasn't in the streets like me. You know what I mean? Like we met, we met in college. On his visit coming up to the college, I was, I was a year above him. So when he was coming up to the college, I was a freshman at the college. So I took him under my wing, showed him the college. You know how it is, the visits, you play basketball, you know? So when he got to the college, this was my guy. I'm his guy, I'm his, you feel what I'm saying? And I used to leave and go home and like get with Wallo, get with my friends. We'd go on route, I'd leave, go back up to college. So one day towards the end of the year of college, he like, you know, we just talking, he like, yeah, you know, you, you, because you, you know, your parents look out for you, you always got money. And at this time I felt close enough to him. I'm like, nah, bro. When I be leaving, they couldn't even believe it. They like, man, get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm like, no. Because they only knew Gilly from campus. Mm -hmm. Gilly who went to school, who my grades wasn't an issue. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, that's all they knew. And then when we go home in the summertime, now we actually hanging together. And he's like, these niggas is crazy. Mm -hmm. But a part of it was intriguing to yeah. him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like you go on, all right, come on, nigga, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a come on, nigga, we gonna bust your chair, nigga. You take, go on one joint with you, you know, shit happens so fast. Wham! Mm -hmm. 20 seconds, you got something that, I got everything you got in 20 seconds that fast. Mm -hmm. It became a rush, you know what I mean? To the point where, you know, I never talked about this, but you know, he would do joints by himself and call me, man, this shit was too sweet, I had to do it. When that day came and that happened and I, I had to drive him to the hospital, you know, me and his, his little brother Bucky, and you know, talking to him, trying to just keep them, you know what I mean? That was, one of the, that was one of the roughest days of my life up until my son passed. For you, a lot of times you can build callous to certain things. You hear people who grew up in, whether it's Philly, the, the NO, Miami, who've seen so much loss, who've seen so much negativity that they learn to walk through it. It's not that they learn to heal or they learn to cope. They almost become numb to it. Right. And mentioning Dev's passing, there is no amount of adversity. Right. There is no amount of loss. There is no amount of lessons learned that could prepare a father to bury their own child. You have publicly shown us moments of mourning, moments of reflection, mm -hmm. moments of celebration. Absolutely. When you are taking your quiet moments from that, because the one thing I always pay attention to at funerals is all the people that are around that help who's ever dealing get through it. Mm -hmm. Because I know eventually they all leave. Right. When you finally got that moment where it was just reflecting on your child and not seeing his face again, mm -hmm. What was that like for you? It's a struggle, man. It's a struggle every day. And the biggest struggle for me is looking at my kids, knowing they never gonna see their brother again. The pain in their eyes, that's what really get me the most. You know what I mean? When I gotta look at my wife and she just start crying for no reason. And it's just like, it's something you will never get over. You know what I mean? It's a black hole in my heart forever. And I'm gonna be all the way honest with you, man. The devil was on my shoulders. If I ain't had strong people around me, man, I would have resorted back to the old Gilly, man. I'd have wiped the whole fucking city out, man. I promise you, man. 
because I got enough money to do it. But it was some, it was, it was people like Wallow, it was people like Freeway. It was people that let me know that and understand that I'm here for a bigger purpose, man. And when I sat down and I really thought about it, I said, I don't want to be a fucking mockery to these kids. These kids that I tell every day, I try to give them the game, the goddess, attention, motivation, and education every fucking day. Just like I tried to give my son every day to stay out these streets. So now it become more personal to me. It's more personal now. It was personal then, but it's even more personal now because I lost my son. So I know what it feel to lose somebody that's supposed to die, but for you. And I can sympathize with all these parents out here who lost a fucking child. That's the hardest shit you will ever go through in life. Nothing will ever be as hard as this. Other than losing my wife, now when I pray, I pray that I die first. Take me first. Because I don't want to go through this shit again ever in life, man. Ever in life, man. So for me, the, the mission is to get to these kids, man. And to try to save, save these kids' lives, man. Because they know I've really been through this shit. What you talking about? Young and you been shot or I been shot? You sold drugs, I've been locked up with 90 pounds of weed, youngin. What you talking about out here? Anything you could do, I done did. And I'm telling you, ain't none of that shit cool. Ain't none of that shit got a good ending to it. So that's my purpose, man. And I stay prayed up, man. I stay, I stay, I stay praying that God keep that fucking devil off my shoulder, man. Because we all human. And we can all make mistakes. We can all do some dumb shit at the drop of a dime. So I just pray that God keep me the person that I've grown into and not the person that I used to be. And that's yeah. the realest. Yeah, the, um, <clears throat> the entire hip hop community, you know, they, they came together to pay their respects. Um, Metro Boomin, E-40, Bobby Smurda, you know, a lot of guys, Guy Lloyd Banks, you mentioned him, uh, but the biggest, he dedicated his Philly show to Cheese. Um, when you see people that, you know, respect and love and admire you, just come together, man, just to pour out themselves and pour out their hearts. Um, you know, how does, how does that make you feel? I mean, what Drake did was beautiful, man. You know what I mean? It will always uh, hold a special part in my heart. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because he didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? I just was in the building just to come see the show. You know what I mean? I don't even know how, how Drake even knew I was the fuck in there. You know what I mean? So for me, you know, for him to do that, you know what I mean? That's what's up. And, and, and especially because Cheese really fucked with Drake. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was, it was a big thing. And I appreciate all the support. I appreciate the support from the stars, but I appreciate the support from the regular motherfuckers. Right. right. You know what I mean? Because they the ones who elevated me and Wallow to be in the situation that we in, you know what I mean? So I appreciate the regular people just as much as I appreciate the stars. I was gonna say, man, like, you talk about the, almost the, the emotional arc of, of losing your son. What was, what was the worst time? The worst time had to be was kind of the worst and the best. The worst time had to be when I had to wash his body. You know what I mean? That was the worst, but it was also the best because I became a man that day. I thought I was a fucking man, but I wasn't. That day, I became a man. I was a little ass boy up to that point. I thought I was a man because I did man shit. I paid bills. You know what I mean? I took care of my family. I take care of my sisters. I take care of my dad. I take care of my mom. 
kids that's not even my kids because they lost they dad. But that day I became a man. When I washed my son's body, it was a gift and a curse. It was a good thing and a bad thing because it was a very painful thing to see your son laying there cold and stiff and but I know I sent him off right. You know what I mean? Wow. And in Islam, that's a big thing, sending them off right. So, and I had some good brothers, man. I wanna, where's the, what camera am I looking at? I wanna look into that camera and when I wanna thank Freeway from the bottom of my heart. You was there every step of the way with me, brother, washing my son's body the hardest shit I ever had to do in my fucking life. I will always love you and respect you, brother, for life. I appreciate that. But yeah, that was the day that I knew it was real. You know, you you talked about the, the, the black hole and nothing can ever replace that. Never. Right? There isn't gonna be something else that comes along in your life and you say, this feels like I have cheese back. Right. That's not, that's not how it works. Nah. But you mentioned that it's personal now for you to teach the, the young people that walk in the shoes you've walked in yeah. how to be something different. Right. How does the light shine, though, Gil? Like how, how do you wake up in the morning and be what you became, which was a light for us? Like every time, I click on a post from your yours of yours, I expect to laugh. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I know that you're gonna bring joy. I know that you and Wallow are gonna do something, or you're talking to your wife, or you're dancing and pouring water on your head at a party. Like right. I'm waiting for those moments. Right. You have become something where you provide people who admire you yeah. with the light, who might be going through something. But when you're going through it like that, how did you find your light, bro, to be able to continue doing what you've earned the expectations of. Man, you gotta be strong, man. You know, going through all the shit that I've went through in my life, bro, that shit make you forward tough, man. That shit really make you forward tough. So, you know, what's done is done. And like you said, cheese not coming back. That's the one thing that's a fact. So, for me to wake up every day and allow my family to see me in an emotional state where I'm not strong, that's not strong. You know what I mean? I'm only really weak around my woman and my friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Other than that, I gotta, I gotta, stay strong for my kids, man. Because they lost a brother who they probably was a lot closer to than I was as a father to son. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if, if y'all three is brothers and all y'all is one year apart, I'm gonna go to him to ask him, hey, what you think I should do about this? Yo, man, what you what think you about this girl? Yep. Man, you her ass fat though. She, <laughs> like, you not coming to pop yeah. because you got two peers right around you that's all, y'all the same age. Mm -hmm. Y'all wrestle together, y'all throw the boxing gloves on, y'all box together at the crib, y'all right. y'all go see girls, she got a girlfriend. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, they had a relationship with him that was even more closer than me. Then my one son, it was his rap partner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mac and so, <laughs> so it's like, I gotta be strong for them. Yeah. I gotta be strong for my wife. I gotta be strong, you know, and don't, I have my moments every day. It ain't been a, a day that went by where I haven't had a moment because the reality of it is, for some reason, every morning that I wake up, that's the first thing on my mind. Like I, like it's like I'm, I'm like I know it's real, but it's like as soon as I wake up, it's like cheese. 
like I almost want to make myself believe it's a dream. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So for me, man, I just, I just got to stay strong, man. You know, Wallow was also extremely emotional about all that's going on. It's, it's his closeness to you, but mm -hmm. his family. Yes, and that's a loss cousin. that that's a loss that he had to experience too. How much did that relationship and having someone to lean on like him help you get through this as well? I and mean, that's my guy. You know what I mean? That's my that called 30 people every day. Yo, pull up on Gil, pull up on Gil, we need good energy. Pull up on him, pull up on him. Like literally, he, he'll just be like, cuz, pull up to the studio, man. And I get there and it just be, and then as I'm sitting there, more motherfuckers come. Here come Meek, here come, here come, here come my son. Here come, like, so, Bala was very important in, in my beginning stages to healing. You know what I mean? Because um, he put real great energy around me. And Freeway played a major role. Freeway called me. Man, 10, 15 times a day. But Freeway had lost his son. He lost his daughter. He had been through what I was going through. You know what I mean? And he could really relate. And, you know, most people say, man, I can't, you know, I don't even imagine what you're going through because, you know, he could imagine. Mm -hmm. So he played a big role, him and Wallow, man, and my wife played a... My wife is really strong, too, man. She's a strong person, you know, really strong human being. They they play they try to play on me how you play on Wallow. You call him nutcase. Yeah, he's a nut ass nigga. <laughs> he's a nut ass. Well, I mean, we ain't gonna get past that. He's a great dude. <laughs> right. Uh, I figure we get it today. I know, right? How um, uh, you speaking on him? How influential, you know, is he really in you guys' success and how you've changed? And um, how excited were you when when he came home from his bed? Well, anybody that listened to my music know that. I always scream free Spado and free Wallow. You know what I mean? Um, you know what Wallow biggest attributes is, is he listen. That's his, that's the biggest thing that, you know, a lot of people come home from jail, they could do a shitload of years and they'll come home and tell you how they gonna do some shit. <laughs> it's like nigga, cell phones weren't even out when you went to jail. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Right. See, Wallow is a doer and he's a listener. He's a listener. He will, he will take some game from you and if it's good advice, he'll add it in. You feel what I'm saying? So when he came home, you know, it really wasn't no thing that we had planned. We just cousins. We always hung together before he went to jail. Mm -hmm. So when he came home, you know, we just hung together. You know what I mean? I was doing a million dollars worth of game in 2012, that's five years before Wallow got out of prison. Right. I was building a brand, you know what I mean? So people always used to say, you need a podcast, you need a, you need a, you, you need a YouTube channel. You need... I looked at a podcast and I was like, why would anybody watch this shit? Like, I, I ain't gonna lie, I looked at the wrong nigga podcast. I was like, <laughs> this shit's corny. Like, is there people interested in this shit? Like, so I'm like, nah. Initially, I was doing a podcast with somebody else. It was gonna be with a kid named Rich Dollars. But as we went through the run, I felt as though it was a too big a difference in age gap and the language, you know, he's an intelligent kid, but he was just young. So that kind of put the podcast on hold. And then as Wallow kind of developed in to showing y'all who he really was, mm -hmm. because you gotta understand, Wallow just came home, was clean cut. Get up, work up, don't do that. Hey, stay there, Benny, you still asleep? <laughs> I called him one day and said, cuz you gotta show motherfuckers who you really is, man. Right. Well, you gonna become the old corny nigga that just keep running up on the camera, man. That ain't you, man. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? 
Then he was sat there, we was in my living room. He said, no, cuz, you know, I speak at colleges, I speak at Google. I'm trying to keep my shit clean. And I said, nigga, you did 20 years in jail. You think niggas think you an angel? Right. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. You can still get the message across right. yeah. by being you. Even more. Yep. He said, D, he thought about it. By the time I woke up in the morning, Wallow came down my timeline, and he was in the pouring rain doing push-ups saying, get the fuck up! Get up! You act like you want something, you don't want it because you still laying in the bed. Mm. That went viral. Mm. He said, cuz, you right. I'm gonna give him me. Mm. Right, give him you, bro. You are a unique person. Don't give them who you think that they think you should be. That ain't you. Give them you. Right. He never looked back. That was one year out of prison. You know, because you come home from prison and you got the mindset of, I want to do good. I'm stay, I'm staying clean. I'm staying. I ain't fucking with no niggas. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? 20. And you can do that, but still be you. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And once he said, I'm giving him me, it was done. Because now you letting them see who Wallow is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you a nut ass nigga, but they gonna appreciate you for being a nut ass nigga. Y'all appreciate Fred, don't y'all? Yeah, we yeah. appreciate yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, but the thing, hey, the <laughs> difference is this though, Gil. Fred do all that quietly though. Yeah. Wallow loud as hell. What? Funny. And also, too, were you really holding the camera in the rain? Yes. Y'all ain't set that up. Fuck no. <laughs> Listen, this is what happened, right? It said, Pow. you know this motherfucker's crazy. He said, oh shit, it's raining? Oh, I gotta get one off, cuz, <laughs> right? He said, I gotta get one off, cuz, right? He walked, he said, he started grabbing his tripod. So I'm like, I look down, I'm like, fuck it, we at the studio. All we got is merch there. So I said, fuck it, come on, I'll do it for you. You ain't got to get you, because he about to go out in the rain, set his tripod up, do all this shit in the rain. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, tell me when you ready. I'm going to come out there, I'm going to do it. I'm thinking 45 seconds in the rain. 30 seconds, this nigga's not gonna really say he get no fucking Martin Luther King speech <laughs> in the fucking rain. <laughs> so he say, I'm ready. He was all the way down there. I'm ready. I run out the back door. I hold my hand over the phone. Wham, go ahead. He run up. All right, come on. All right. First of all, I didn't even know where he was at, first of all. So when I ran out and I pushed the joint, that nigga ran from a block away. I'm like, man, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Then he get up on the camera. Then right when I think he going in, he started going in some more. Then I thought he was going to end again. He started going, man, the fuck up, man. Fucking shit. <laughs> you see, he said, I could have got my drop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you should have got that fucking tripod. That's yeah. my fault doing that dumb shit. Right. Hey, bro, you guys have, it's, it's hard to do what y'all have done, which is like grow up in front of people. Yeah. Right? Obviously, Wallow, once he got out, but you coming from the rap game, mm -hmm. you know, shoot, from figures for life to moving in, cash money, mm -hmm. but you're seen a certain way. Because of the way you came up, because of mm -hmm. the things you've gone to, there's like, quote unquote, a G code mm -hmm. that's supposed to be respected. Mm -hmm. But you've always been outspoken when you think something's fishy, yeah. when you think something's wrong. Yeah. And you've been able to do that in a way that's respectful of you, but also like, nah, like I'm not effing around, yeah. you know? And I'm from New Orleans. I'm gonna right. be straight up with you. I'm yeah. from the NO. Yeah. So anytime Birdman name come yeah. up, I'm like, Homeboy, crazy, right? <laughs> I was like, because, you know, he has a certain reputation. He do? From the crib. Yeah, he does. Uh, and so, I, no, don't start. No, I just asked you, dude. Yeah. I, I used to be down there in New Orleans. I yeah. didn't know that. For you, yeah. the, to have the ability, man, to be authentically yourself and the, how can I say this, the, the courage, the bravery to speak right when it's right, even if it's about someone who people see in a different way, 
How have you been able to keep that main thing the main thing and stay true to yourself like that? Really, for me, I stay out of people's business. You know what I mean? I only, I don't really, if I speak on something, you know, I'm usually, I'm playing. You know what I mean? I'm just, just a joke. Like, like the Wiz Khalifa shit, it was just a joke. You know what I mean? But obviously, you know, it got taken out of context by him because when I talked to him, he was like, you know, it, you, basically his feelings was hurt or whatever. So when, with me, when I, when I, if I'm playing with somebody, I'm just playing with them. Other than that, I don't really talk about nobody unless I got an issue with you. Now, if I got an issue with you, I'm going to let you know I got an issue with you. It's going to be known. I'm going to see you. I'm not going to speak. We're not going to do no fake shit. I'm not a part of that life. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to fake it with you. I'm not going to, if I don't fuck with you, I'm going to, hey, what's up, what's up? I ain't going to look at you. What's up, what's up? And I'm going to keep it moving. We know we don't fuck with each other. We ain't got to harm each other. We ain't got to do nothing to each other. But we know we don't fuck with each other. So let's keep it like that. You know what I mean? Fellas, the football season is here. And once again, we got to talk about our partners over at DraftKings. Listen, DraftKings still wants to help you get in the game. So any new customer using the promo code PIVOT, if they place a $5 bet, they get $200 in bonus bets. And y'all know what I'm going to do. Y'all know I'm going with the same game parlays. Multiple bets in the same game and even bigger payouts. And if you don't have Sportsbook in your area, don't worry. You can download DraftKings Daily Fantasy. You can get to that money the same exact way. Go make it happen. Same game parlays, daily fantasy. It's all about the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Sign up right now. Any new customer using the promo code PIVOT, place a $5 bet, and get $200 in bonus bets. The rap game. You've been, you just, you've been in a long time. Yeah. Are you done with rapping? I heard you say Shit, something. Shit, I've been done. That's what I'm saying. Them but niggas but, don't pay enough. <laughs> you know how many? 3,500, 4,000, 4,250, <laughs> shows I had to do. I ain't want to show up for that fucking $1,930. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. <laughs> you got paid more at Ross? No. <laughs> no, but I, I just, I like to keep my mind, first of all, I never actually worked at Ross, but I know this where these niggas thought I would be at. <laughs> right. So right. every other month, I put my security jacket on and I go do an hour at Ross. <laughs> you know what I mean? I tap my man, hey nigga, you off the clock, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, just to keep myself grounded. So nobody at Ross thought this was strange? They, they be like, Gilly, <laughs> what's up? Y'all know what I'm doing. <laughs> they, we watched you on Instagram. You picked this Ross today. Yup. <laughs> Man, you got Gilly that. crazy. They pull their phones out. Gilly and Ross, you really looking down the house like I make sure niggas ain't stealing. You know what I mean? I ain't playing no game. I'm gonna be all solid out with this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I might get an hour and a half. Depends if I gotta take pictures and shit. You know what I mean? Uh, keeps me grounded, man, because I know that's where these niggas had me at. They had me doing security at Ross by now, about 2023, 20, nigga be doing security at Ross. Shit. Y'all niggas got me fucked up, man. My hustle is impeccable, man. One thing about me, man, I'm a hustler, man. One thing they could never say about Gilly was, he wasn't getting no money. I don't give a fuck what level I was on. I'm gonna hunt down some motherfucking money. Signed with Tony Draper. Sign with cash money. All both of them deals were six figure deals. I'm talking about cash in the account. Got some money from Koch. Mm -hmm. Did a joint venture with Tom Baha Lee. Got some money from Warner Brothers for major figures. I'm a closer. So my question is this. I'm gonna get some money. How do you continue to to know when the hustle needs to change? Right, you mentioned rap, they weren't paying enough, and now you've moved into other ventures, all the ventures you just said. When do you know in your mind, okay, time is up on this hustle, it's time to move to the next one, and how do you keep preparing for the next one? See, I'm just always working. So, million dollars worth of game was, was me just giving out game to the youth to keep them out the streets and out of jail. Then, I, then, I, then, I, then when it really exploded was one day I woke up, I said, you know what, I'm taking questions today. DM me a question, I'm a nigga start asking me about relationship advice. Hell, he been with his girl for 20 years. Did, 
I started giving out that type of game. So I didn't know a million dollars worth of game was going to turn into this. Mm -hmm. It was just me putting the work in. Sometimes you put blind work in and then money you could see come to you. Mm -hmm. I put that blind work in and then it turned into a brand. Because now everybody's reposting it. Yo, Gilly crazy. This shave room, ball alert, academics, say cheese. Everybody's posting it now. Right, right, right. Motherfucker see me on the streets, right, right, <laughs> Gilly, right, right. They saying my shit. Cause if a nigga make a basket, she going in the casket, Gil. <laughs> oh, so, like, like, you feel me? Like, like, I got a sense of humor. Yeah. With my peoples mm. that I can say shit that other motherfuckers can't say. Right. Feel what I'm saying? I, like, literally, I just said, if my wife gets somebody else some pussy, I'm going to get her out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you rhymed it and it sounds right. cool. Right. <laughs> but with my, with my peoples, they know I'm joking. Right. Because they like, shut up, two to beat you the fuck up. You ain't going to do nothing to two. Two, because she can't do nothing to fuck wrong. Two, 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 two. shut the fuck up. Like, and, and then, secondly, they, they know my personality. I see a lot of shit that probably other motherfuckers be like, yo, if I said that shit, like, but I don't give a fuck. So that's why, you know, the cancel culture, they canceled me three times. <laughs> It's week two, and it's time for our DraftKings Sportsbook picks. I'm going to go with New York over Arizona. New York has their running back back. They went out and got a tight end. Their young quarterback's going to ascend, and Arizona ain't got nobody. Yeah, I know I love my team from Duval, but that ain't why I'm picking them. I just want Jacksonville to beat Kansas City because I know they will. That's my pick. I'm going with home team. Miami's about to go to New England and show out. Miami beats New England at New England. Well, we have some great picks. Fred's kind of being a homer, but that's what we do here. DraftKings Sportsbook. Did Lou Young call you before he put out, you got to lick it before you nigga, stick it? Man, that nigga crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's no, how you, that's how you, hey, that's how you be in the bed for real in the morning, man. Man, no, I did a, I did a skit. I woke up, me and my woman in the bed. I said, hey, everybody be in my DM. Get it, because they do. Gilly, how you and two been together so long? I was playing. I said, because you got to lick it before you stick it. You got to eat it for you beat it. Yeah. <laughs> he a freak nigga. I can tell you. Oh, he ready to invite you somewhere. <laughs> what you mean? He warming up. He's like, what, 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 oh, I you? finally got me one. Well, wait, what that mean? <laughs> you might invite me somewhere. It ain't on me. Oh, 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 oh. It's not on me. Oh, what he talking about? He ready to invite me somewhere. I don't do that freak man stuff. That's the no, that he talking about. Oh, yeah, no. that's the that he talking about. You a little freaky too. You a little, freak stuff you you a little kinky too. Tell him it's, it's the ones that don't admit it. The ones that the nastiest. <laughs> he a little kinky too. <laughs> I seen him talk about it. He was looking at two a little too oh. much. <laughs> <laughs> he said that nigga thick like them chicks in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he apologized though. He yeah, apologized. yeah, he came back the next day. Someone apologized to us. Your ass ain't that fat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Lou, Lou got him too. I said that nigga crazy. Hey, that, hey, that man. nigga. Yo, a lot of but I don't folks is really bad at me though. But I, listen, that's what I understand about the NFL analysts, right? They all be saying some crazy shit when it come down. Like, he stacked down below. <laughs> <laughs> he got a set of thighs on him. With those thighs, you wouldn't want to run into that guy. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> They'd be like, look at them chops. Yeah, he got a nice yeah. set of chops. He got That's a nice set of chops. He can just blow him off the ball. I'm like. <laughs> Like, like, why? Like, it's locker room culture, man. That's locker room culture. It's just locker room culture, bro. Oh, you be around. Okay. Yeah, because you, you went straight into locker room culture. He ain't been working out. <laughs>
He looked like the chicks in Onyx. I said, he be in the strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right there. hey, Jilly. Nigga told on himself on that. <laughs> <laughs> and he hurt all my friends' feelings. He did. I know the Onyx girls. He gonna talk bad about my ladies like that. They're my friends. Look at him. <laughs> The likes of you nigga throwing all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, girl. Hey, that's Gilly. That because he used to be ugly, too, though. Oh, here you go. Shit, ugly niggas winning. Shit. Yeah, he used to be. We winning. <laughs> <laughs> See, he let me just take. He used me. to eat his pineapples upside down before he got his teeth fixed. <laughs> What this man talking about? <laughs> hey, Freddie, I ain't gonna lie. I wasn't smart enough for that one. <laughs> yeah, that was... I'm like, what he had on? He had bottom joints. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I chills it up, too. I had some little raccoon teeth. Oh, you did? Yeah, man. You 20 gotta... racks, though. Hey, that's why they like Because, you know, my joints like 40, then they 48 now, so they getting a little stained. Mm. So I'm just trying to figure out. Who's selling the regular size teeth? <laughs> the big joints ain't the ones, Coach. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> hey, hey, you're supposed now to I'm be... talking like I got a list for a million dollars left the game. The million dollars left the game. I'm trying to get the regular size puppies. Where yeah. they at? Your joints look normal. Appreciate it, man. Where they at? Down in Miami. Uh, Mira Agunlie. Dr. A. Honestly, yeah, though, Dr. A. Dilla, you got to realize this dude fitted hat is an eight, though. <laughs> oh, right? So That's a big mother. Yeah, so like his teeth can be a different size uh, yeah. than like your teeth. Yeah, that's a point because my <laughs> shit, little <laughs> shit, I wear <laughs> six and seven eighths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, child size. My shit won't even go on your dress. <laughs> 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 Can't fit that Some little type of helmet they bought out for him. Because <laughs> the great kazoo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the they great my kazoo. Head up. They didn't put a helmet on it. Damn, that's crazy, so man. So you did all of that. You went around the block, all for him to come back and still, he gonna invite you somewhere. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was the whole thing. Where, where you invite me to, man? Fred enjoyed it, being, me and my lady go to new resorts and new beaches and things. What? It's it's a, it's a, you know it's a, it's a vibe. Wait, hold on. So everybody be naked? Yeah. Oh no, man. He invited Kevin Hart. He invited everybody. Who went? I don't know. Nobody. Nobody takes him up on the offer. I'm just saying because I just don't want my woman out there like that, man. But everybody, everybody's naked. It's, it's like a safe space. Yeah, it's happy. It's like yeah. But what hippie-ish. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is right. Okay. I take my wife right now. She's a smoker. I'm talking about. It's a bunch of ugly couples. Damn, look at that motherfucker. You don't think get to see. <laughs> you don't even deserve it. You don't deserve it. <laughs> but you think about it. But this is the thing. Now you go to the beach, right? It's, it's, now, now it's niggas out there don't get no motherfucking action. Yeah. Y'all, it'd be, it be y'all three niggas. The, the 20 year, the y'all three, it'll be y'all three 20 years from now. <laughs> out there, look, look at that thing right there. Looking for Fred. Fred, look at that thing. <laughs> look at that thing, because you see my balls, Fred. I think she can see my balls. <laughs> I think she can see my balls, Fred. <laughs> That's all she going to see. That other thing will be stripping. It'll be 65, no threat. Oh, balls, huh? Hey, man. Balls. Hey, let, me, let me do my job, bro. I, I should have known getting y'all two on the same show probably wasn't I, that's a call I probably shouldn't have made. But for, for y'all, bro, such unique personalities. And y'all been able to, like, y'all can hit every piece of it. If it has to be serious, it's serious. If you want to have fun, it's fun. Y'all can do entertainers. You could do, y'all do musicians, actors. Y'all have been able to do everything. For you, what is the best part about your show? What part do you wake up every day or where you have an opportunity to do a show? Are you like, man, I can't wait until this happens, until we can create this piece for people to take part of? The best part about our show is honestly, it's, it's not even a show. The best part about our, our show is Okay, prime example, we in Houston, Trey Day. We at the mall. Trey Day probably got 15 to 20 celebrities. We all in the mall together. D 
this kid who you can look in his fucking eyes and tell he was with all the dumb shit. Everything say he was with the dumb shit. He walking by, he looking at all the celebrities. That nigga ain't give a fuck. That nigga seen me and Wallo. That nigga said, oh, baby, hold up, baby. Hey, man. And started crying right there on the spot in front of everybody. And see, I was going to go kill some niggas, man. I was going to go kill them niggas two days ago, man. And y'all niggas stopped me from killing them niggas, man. Y'all niggas like my dads, man. That shit right there mean the most. That nigga didn't give a fuck about none of them people, none of them celebrities, none of them people looking at him cry, none of that shit. That man and woman didn't even understand why the fuck he was crying. You feel what I'm saying? And all we did was bring him in and embrace him and show him some love and show him some, some passion that he ain't never felt before. So that shit be meaning the most to us. That when we come across these youngins, and these ghettos who like, Wallo, well, man, some niggas killed my brother, man, but when I seen what you said, man, you right, man, I gotta live for my brother, man. I was gonna go kill them niggas, man. But I'ma live for my brother, man. That type of shit mean the most. You feel what I'm saying? So, the show is effective, but really the people who lives we affect. You know, us giving out four and a half million dollars to the, to the, to the minority community, the black and the brown people. That's what mean the most to us when we pull up to their shop, with that fifty, with that hundred, whatever it is, and they start crying because some people nobody ever gave them shit in life. You know what I'm saying? Some people nobody ever gave them nothing. And then you got guys like us that's gonna pull up and might give you the biggest check you ever seen in your life. That's what mean the most to us. Fellas, I was stressed out. I've been trying to find tickets. I've been working with competing companies, trying to figure out how I could get this. Why y'all ain't told me about GameTime.co? Or at least say, RC, download the GameTime app. Y'all got me around here looking like Willie Lump Lump. Man, I had to tell you about it because Beyonce tickets recently, they were crazy to find, but you know what I had? The Game Time app. Made it easy, no stress. Had my wife and kids. We, we about on the fourth row. On the fourth row? <laughs> Look, I got something better for you. The good thing about it, you can see where your seats are from the app. That's so amazing to me. But even better than that, you have the Game Time guarantee. So if you find tickets that are cheaper, they will guarantee you up to 110% of the difference. Man, that's crazy. So right now, get your mobile device out, download the GameTime app, or go to GameTime.co. And if you use the promo code PIVOT, you'll get $20 off of your first purchase. Gil, what's your finish line? You talk about the grind, but it gotta be an end somewhere. My finish line, be all the way real, is I'm the next LeVar Ball. That's my finish line. The next LeVar Ball. Yeah, ain't that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How so? Because I'm about to, my, my, my grandson is two, my nephew is four, my other grandson is one. So uh, I got the basketball court <laughs> and the motherfucker, the baseball mound and the football field being built Great at the mother. new crib. So. By the time they reach the motherfucker six, seven, shit, I'll probably be at the crib like this. No, this is how the rich nigga sits. So I'll figure out <laughs> start sitting like this. You know what I mean? After I get some more money, I ain't did yet. After I get some more money, I'll start sitting like this. They get trained in three days a week. I go to all their games, talk shit. My nephew the best. Eighth grade in the country, nigga. Just had 45 on them niggas. <laughs> Just saying, we live in a different world, man. They already love sports. My, my nephew, he three years old. Y'all yeah, seen him on my Instagram? Mm -hmm. He dribbled 40 straight times with one hand. 
at three and then dribble 20 straight times with the other hand. So we already working. He already wants all he want to do. Basketball, Uncle Dude, basketball. Okay, cool, I got you. We're going to get you right. Your best friends with your family, right? Comes the thing, y'all hang together three, four times a week for, for two, three hours. Now you, you with your family. Feel what I'm saying? Send all y'all to the same school. Y'all all play on the same team together. Only two years apart. Damn, boy. Gilly Ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what's that acronym for game again? Uh, God, it's attention, motivation, and education. I love that. On our show, obviously, the pivot, we like to ask our guests, what's your biggest pivot in life? Of everything we've talked about, you know, from rap, coming up, doing knucklehead shit in the street, becoming a man, you know, losing loved ones, um, having success, just everything that we've talked about, everything you've gone through in your life. What's been that one moment, that one defining moment that, you know, um, you can consider the most pivotal moment in your life? One day I was sitting in the house and my oldest daughter, Diana, had like ran past me. Like, kind of was like in my peripheral, it was her and cheese at the crib. And uh, it was kind of like, and then I just sat there and I looked at both of them. And right then and there, I asked myself, like, what the fuck is you doing? You got fucking kids out here, man. You got whole responsibilities out here, man. And you run around here throwing fucking rocks at the penitentiary, man. Mm. What the fuck are you doing, man? That was the day that changed my life, that I pivoted. I was like, yo, man, you, you got to smarten up out here. You tripping, man. So then the, the wildness went from this level to this level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then as the wildness, then it was became, man, I got to cut certain niggas out of my circle, man. You know what I mean? No, I ain't into that type shit no more, man. Right. No, I don't, no. No, man, them niggas, what them niggas doing, them niggas, about, them niggas trying to get indicted, man. No, I'm good, man, I ain't. Yeah. I just separated myself away from the bullshit. You know what I mean? And it was really from around street niggas. I just started surrounding myself around good people. Mm -hmm. Feel what I'm saying? Right. Niggas that didn't operate off of egos. You ain't gotta worry about a motherfucker back doing you. You ain't gotta worry about a motherfucker counting your money. You ain't gotta worry about a motherfucker worrying about, well, you got that watch and I got this watch. And, and then when you start doing that, then the energy changes. And then once the energy change, opportunity change. Because it was like once I, once I, I changed the aggressiveness and I changed the energy, it was like this cloud just left me. Like, all right, nigga, we was here long enough. We was waiting for you to smarten up, nigga. We was tired of raining on your motherfucking parade, man. You, okay, you get it now. All right. And it was like the cloud left. It was like... I'm doing something right. Right. Love it. Then the other pivot was when we pivoted in a million dollars worth of game. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a pivot. Hey, when you got the keys to the city, you ask if it came with front row seats to the Eagles or the Sixers. So it's football season now, bro. Right. You know, you, you do a lot of stunting. I saw I'm you stunting for the- I'm paying for them fucking tickets. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> this my camera, nigga. I'm paying for them fucking tickets. <laughs> fucking 1300 a fucking game. Shit. Hey, are they going to finish the deal this year? You do the know Philadelphia we Eagles win the, the Super Bowl? You know we going to finish the deal. You know it. You, who you betting on? I would have to go Kansas City still. Kansas City. If this. I'm betting, the, you ask who I would we bet We got on. better. Y'all did get better. Yeah, we got yeah. better. First of all, I'm calling it right now, we got the all uh, defensive rookie of the year. 
Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter. I agree. Anytime you got Lane Johnson, who ain't gave up a sack in 7,000 days, <laughs> see, oh, no, this kid's a goddamn beast. He's a beast. So we already wrapping that up. Him, Fletcher Cox, Reddick, Graham, no, come on, man. Shh. Scary, man. You know we got them boys on the outside too, right? Yeah, Clay, Bradbury. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we, yeah, we actually. Played your position, right? Yeah, we had Slay on the show. Uh, yeah, that's our my guy. guy. Yeah, that's our guy. Mm -hmm. Fly Eagles fly on the road to victory. Y'all gonna score enough? We had Devontae on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that guy. <laughs> Slim Reaper. Uh, Slim Reaper. That guy. AJ. <laughs> that guy. Jalen. You put, your, you put your rich leg up? You put your rich leg up? <laughs> I mean, he the richest milk in the league. <laughs> he, can, he can hold his leg like that. He deserve he? it. <laughs> yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. See, what, what make it, what, what make us so proud of Jalen is that everybody did to him what they just did to Dion. They said, wait, you might got to take two talking about. I don't know if he can progress into, did you say that? Me? Yeah. No, I was always a big Jalen fan. Oh, okay. I uh, pushed him. I said, I got a whole take that I'm about to post this week coming yeah, up because it's season it. time. Everybody went in on him. Mm -hmm. Now, he the MVP favorite. Yeah. Think about that. So it's, it's like, it's not what they say, it's what you do. And he doing it. And that's my guy. By the way, that's man, my uh, we appreciate you. I thought about something while you were talking. Uh, like you have so many different phases of life that you get to teach from. And most of the quotes in life come, come or are created because life is hard, right? And especially whether it's us in the South as black people, you in Philly as black people, a lot of it is because our lives are hard. And I remember my mom would always talk about the afterlife, right? She's big into church. And it was because they didn't have a lot of explanations for why life was so hard. Right. A lot of explanations for why people get hurt, people get sick, why you lose people, why you go through things. And your life, man, has given you so much. And just sitting here listening to you, my one thought was, life cannot kill you if you refuse to die. Mm -hmm. You know, you've gone through so much, man, but you've continued to wake up and open your eyes and you live. Uh -huh. A lot of times things happen to us, bro, and they break us down so much, we stop living. Yeah. And we don't take care of the people we still have to take care of, and we don't affect the people that God gave us the ability to affect. So from, from me to you, man, I truly admire who you are, Thank you, brother. what you've come from, and the way that you allow all of us to see it, man. So thank you so much for joining appreciate us here, bro. That, we appreciate man. you, bro. Appreciate that, man. Yes, sir. Sure. Now that was cool. And, and we still gonna do it, though. Like, oh, yeah. When and now that I see how little you are, too. Oh, you know, <laughs> what size you are doing now? I thought you was taller. <laughs> I thought you was taller. You like 5'10". First of all, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, G. I'm only 5'9", so we I got you two inches. All right, 5'11". <laughs> yeah, I'm 5'11". That was 5'11". Oh, he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you fall? Why are you two grown-ass like this? Gilly. Hey, Gilly, when you ain't tall, you want all your inches, dog. Hell yeah. But motherfucker call me 5B. He finally hates stop that shit. I'm 5'9". I just thought about it. Shout out Cube and the Big Three. He's the two-time celebrity champ. Big First off, he's a ball hog. So No, 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 no. I'm accurate. You're a ball I don't know, I'm accurate. My shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the thing is, he better be good like that, cause Wallow play in the I'm negative. Forty-seven. What that mean? Okay. You shoot. You okay, a, you're a shooter. On. Okay. Let me just say this. This is what this means. All the young kids across the country want to play me in basketball. I'm somebody's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's another grandfather out here that all the kids want to play? <laughs> Do you think that? Do you think when your grandkids is 20, they like, pop, pop, you can't beat me one-on-one? -on -one. No, they know you, they, you can't beat them one-on-one. -on -one. Like, all the kids want to play me. 
and I cook them, barbecue, bake them, <laughs> season them, obey your whole time, turn them over. To, the NLE Chopper is 20 years old. Y'all going at it too. Yeah. He can play. Yeah, y'all was going at it. But, bro, this shit is. You can't even back you up. You can shoot it. I give you that. You can shoot it. <laughs> okay. Four pointers and all. I played lethal shooter one on one. He, yeah, he can hoop. Lethal shooter is 6'3. Right. At least 250. Why was he driving to the basket pushing me out of bounds, man? You lethal shooter. Like, <laughs> Shoot it. So, am I lying? Where's my cameraman at? Am I, he like, I got to win. Wait, you're a lethal shooter. What did you mean? You win. You're going to the basket. He goes, ah, pushing me out. I'm like, I don't expect you to be from here. <laughs> Oh, the score gets six to four. Now you're throwing me out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up.